g'day. Um, it's off season time for us, so we haven't been doing a lot of shooting in the bush, but we've been asked about doing some technical videos, some technique videos, that sort of stuff. So we're going to set up in here and see if we can do that. I hope people enjoy. We'll see you in a bit. I'd like to stress and I'd like to start by saying I'm not a professional. We're not, me and Sam, we're not professionals of what we do. We're not military trained, we haven't done competitions or any of that sort of stuff. This is purely a hobby of ours. Um, it's something that um, I put a lot of thought into and made, made it all work very well, but I very much use my theories and my techniques are, are mine. And I would not like to be trying to put forward that this is the way it should be done. This is just simply the way that, that I do it. Um, and Sam does it. So, but anyway, I'll go through that as to try and break it down and try and do that. And if there's other things that you want to see or want to hear about, then leave it in the comments and certainly something we can look at and try and try and put forward. But anyway, let's start with what I'm talking about, which is our prone position, long range shooting techniques. Let's start with our setup of our gun. Um, I'm largely shooting extreme long range. Um, and that means that essentially the gun is normally going to be on an upward trajectory. Um, I have the gun set up, which I've been a little bit through before, and I would go through again. I have it set up in a fairly high position, so essentially the, the cheek rest, the scope, everything's up pretty high. And like I said, we're generally shooting um, with a fair bit of extension because we've got some up elevation. Um, I also run, I've got it on one of my bag bases at the rear here. Um, that's not needed at all. It's not what I used to shoot with. It's a little bit more comfortable in the way of being able to fine-tune it rather than squeezing and holding a bag makes it a little more adjustable on that score a little more stable but really no different in the technique to shooting with a normal base so essentially that's our setup of our rifle um, and I'll go through that in more detail later but um, it, it is in a setup to be able to deal with most conditions where you've got slight downward, uh, downward inclinations or upward inclinations trying to make sure all that work and that'll make more sense as I talk further on but anyway, to, um, first of all in the way of shooting position, I essentially come from the school of thought that is you want your weight directly behind. You want to be directly behind the rifle. So that means that if I'm shooting over in that direction, I want to come up to the rifle with it straight in front of me. I'll then lay down to the rifle, so essentially I'm down just to the left of it being a right hander or just to the right of it being a left hander. But essentially, so then, my whole body, uh, essentially from just alongside my jawbone, is immediately behind the rifle. And, and to explain that a little more clearly, you, I essentially work it out along the lines of that I want the centre line of the, the, the impact or the, the force from the rifle to come straight down my chest and be able to go straight down my leg more my right leg than my left leg because I'm, a, I'm shooting as a right hander but essentially down to my main, through my main weight in my body. And at this point I'd explain the theory of what I'm talking about. That is that essentially to shoot well and, and, and very accurately you actually need to um, have a balanced platform you're shooting from um, and beyond that point there's all sorts of other details involved but the real thing you want is complete repeatability. So every time you pull that trigger, it does exactly the same thing. Now a lot of people will tell you, and I agree with, but they'll tell you that essentially a relaxed body is the best way to do that. The truth of it is, a relaxed body, yes, it is the best way to deal with it, but it's because of it being repeatable. If you want to sit there as a ball of muscle, but you can do it exactly the same every time, there's nothing wrong with it. That's going to work. Um, and as for a lot of the techniques that I show, uh, it's about trying to come up with that same thing. It's repeatable, it has balance, but it's about being repeatable. So let's go back to where we're at. I actually present myself straight to the rifle, so I'm straight behind. That rifle is pointing straight in front of me. Where I actually positioned the buttstock, took me a little bit to work out, but I actually put it on my collarbone. So I actually present it to my collarbone. Yes, people might think big guns, they break your collarbones and things. Maybe it does. It doesn't find, I don't find any difficult for me or for my little wife to shoot like this. That is largely because I want to have my head straight up and down. To have the, the, the big feature that I find to try and keep things repeatable is a relaxed body. Um, and more to the point, I would say a comfortable body. 
So I don't want to have my head screwed over onto this. That's not going to give me a lot of comfort. I also prefer to run my scope up higher. And that's because when I have, and, and the whole gun up higher in truth, that's because when I have the gun down very low, if I have it down here, I've got to screw my neck up. Um, I'm not a very flexible person. I don't like screwing my neck up. It causes pain in my neck. But more than anything I've found, you, you'll cope with that. You'll get in that position, you'll make it work. But it creates a tension, which is something you'll find will work against you in the, in the long run. It might not work against you most shots, but you're after complete consistency. You want to be able to come back and do this. You want to be able to have fun at the range or the, where you're shooting. It's a hard target. You're trying to deal with conditions. You might run through 30, 40, 50 rounds. If you're not comfortable, if you haven't found a place that's comfortable, you'll find you'll be fighting yourself before very long. So for me, I hold, I set the rifle up higher, I set the scope up higher, so my head is very close to straight up and down. Where is comfort for me, it's very close to straight up and down. So essentially, the, my shoulders are, uh, are square. I do rest on my elbows and my forearms. Another feature that I'd go through, which is um, no doubt uh, not recommended by some people, but I don't run my chest on the ground. Um, this may also be influenced because I'm a larger guy. I'm six foot four and I weigh 100 kilos, 220 pounds for the US. Um, and so I do a few things different to what the classic prone shooter would do. You'll notice back down at my feet, I have my point, my toes on the ground. I don't have my foot flat over to the side here as the classic way. Simple reason for that, I'm not very flexible. That's not comfortable. So I could train myself and squeeze it out there, but where I find I'm, I'm actually making this whole system where I have my toes to adjust myself when I'm wriggling around, and I have my weight rested to my knees. So I have a fair bit of weight, um, and maybe that would affect more being smaller that you want more planted, or how your gun's set up and all that sort of stuff. But for me, my legs are straight behind me. There's not one sticking out to the side. They're both straight behind me. They're, they're a little spread, but not too much. And I'm balancing my toes on the ground, which gives me that point to adjust myself and wriggle around. But largely, I've got enough weight in my, in my stomach and my thighs down to my knees to give myself good balance. And then I'm actually positioned on my, on my elbows. Um, and the bottom of my diaphragm is down here. What that gives, and I, I find that um, as much as I use um, breathing pause and um, control my breathing, um, I find that it's not affecting my shot massively because I'm not trying to lay down on my chest where I'm crushing everything to do the shot. I'm actually up on my shoulders and using this platform, shoulders and, and essentially the bottom part of my, or the, the upper part of my forearms is where I'm actually balanced. It lets me position properly onto, like I said, onto my collarbone get in behind the gun properly um, and then I tend to do a little overlap of hands so I've got some balance in front of you it's once again about balance and consistency and, and I would also say it's um, not an exact format at any stage I change the different guns I shoot with different grips and things I definitely vary uh, my position slightly in my hand structure to um, match the firearm that I'm using I do quite like this style of hand, of this style of um, of a rifle, where I can essentially balance very simply, lightly balance my, my thumb on the back. Um, but I, um, I I certainly do not like or recommend a full grip on a long range gun. Um, when I fire them, my 338s, the the 300 Win Mag, or any of them, I want very little tension. I might have a little tiny bit with my fingers pushing. So I'm keeping a little grip on there. So I'm actually pushing that back into me sometimes. But largely, I will run almost no tension on this hand and I'm trying to just squeeze that trigger directly back towards through the, gut, through the stock of the gun. But I want it to, I want to be able to fire that trigger knowing this rifle would not flinch. My finger is not gonna make that rifle flinch. So the next point I'd go to in that um, is the normal thing of, of um, prone shooting, I will preload my bipod. Now the preload of a bipod in my way of doing it is no more than taking it to the forward of its slack. 
I'm not trying to push it forward. I'm not trying to put real tension on it. I simply want, the reason I'm pre-riding a, 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 a bipod is I simply want this, this movement we've got, I want to make sure that's as central as possible. Um, and I suppose that'll go quickly into the design of my, of my guns, the way I design them. The reason I put this slide on the back here, um, it is very much to work with a bipod. I want that action there to be like you're looking at. It's straight. So I lose the feature, the adjustable buttstock or the, the angled buttstock on a normal hunting rifle and a lot, of, a lot of rifles is good for the fact that you can move your bag backwards and forwards to give yourself more or less height. The negative feature to go with that is that your gun is moving back and in that case, they will drop down or, or raise up, which are, they'll, they'll drop down generally as they actually come back. So there's actually a little movement inside there. Now, if that's completely consistent, of course that doesn't matter. I tend to find because I'm part of the mechanism, I want that to slide straight across. I want my shoulder to be the thing that it's actually causing it to change any direction. So then my shoulder has control out of me setting myself up properly, and this is simply going to let it slide underneath. So I want it to be consistent, I want it to be straight, but that's why I designed the gun like this. You'll also notice another part of my setup, it's a normal basic rule. Um, essentially where my cheek pressure is, not that there's going to be a lot of it, it should be directly over the top of where my bag is. I don't want the bag to be up the front here um, and my cheek to be down the back um, in the fashion of when it does come through that shove, you want to make sure that it isn't being forced in any other direction. So that will also go into, in that same discussion, goes into the way I set up, like I said, on, on these rifles I'll actually use my collarbone. I actually sit it on that hard bit of your collarbone. A bit that if you push hard it'll hurt, but you'll find in a rifle, once you're firing it, you don't even, uh, you don't even notice. It's not something that causes pain. But what I'm actually doing is I want as much as possible that point of pressure to be balanced to where the pressure is coming from. Um, and I've actually gone through and, and it's slightly different on different rifles. I'll actually move this in accordance to how the rifle is actually shooting. You know, uh, you can actually get to the point where if you're pushing too high, the nose of the gun will squash down as it pushes back. If you're pushing too low, the nose of the gun will lift up as you push back. These are only small things, but they're things of, of fine tuning all this stuff to make that gun cycle as smoothly as possible. Um, and in truth, I ask for the gun to shoot very accurately, but I also analyze what the gun's actually doing. One of the big features that I know if I'm doing my job right or wrong as a shooter is essentially when the gun fires, I want it to be able to whack me, come back down and be on target. So even the likes of my 338, if that has moved more than two MOA off the target after a shot, my gun isn't set up right or I am not set up right. So it is obviously involves a fair bit of fine tuning of setting things up, the likes of my muzzle brakes, the likes of this gun here I've modified to put the, um, this is a TRG, a Seiko bipod, which I really like because it's center of gravity. I've put that on there. All, all these features are things that I like to do in an engineering sense, but they're all designed around that same aim. I want the firearm to um, ultimately be very accurate on target, but I use all those clues to try and make sure it stays that way. And that's another thing I would point out as something that I've learned out of shooting, is that you can, um, you can go out to the range and have a good day shooting badly. Um, and what I'm trying to say there is because you get 20 bullseyes in a row, awesome, good on you, good day, but it, isn't, it doesn't mean you're doing everything right. Um, if you do it all the time like that, then hell, who the hell am I to tell you you're doing it wrong? That's, if you're completely repeatable like that, you do it like that, no matter how your technique, then awesome. I find that the, the process of getting everything right and making everything work properly it's what is what gives you consistency. And that's what makes you shoot well on bad days, on days when the conditions aren't right and days when you aren't in the best gear, you can still shoot well. And that's because your technique is right, because your gun set up right. And it means that even with those other conditions, it becomes hard. It, well, sorry, even with those other conditions that make it so hard, you can still be successful, you can still do well. Um, and as a rule, the shooter who does well doing things badly, um, they, and you will do, it can happen. 
um, but also when the pressure comes on the wheels tend to fall off that. So one of the things I'll go through in, in trying to do that, I'm, I'm not very good at this trying to explain things, but in, in trying to explain it, um, the, the logic which I'll come back to essentially is to try and keep it consistent, to try and keep it balanced. When this rifle pushes, I want it to behave. Essentially, the, the logic of it is that three eighths of an inch, I believe in some of the rifles are probably up to half an inch, depending on how hard they hit, of travel that you want to have that is consistent. Um, I would like it to keep the barrel in exactly the same position through that moment of movement. The truth of it is, it only needs to be consistent. But I believe the less you can make it move, the more consistent you're going to be. The reason your body is behind the line, which is where we're coming from, the reason you're dead straight, is that essentially if you're over to one side, the classic way that you see people shoot, one leg out to the side, leg over here, and, and they're in here, they tuck it over where it actually sits on either the shoulder or in the little pocket between your shoulder and your collarbone. So you're actually over to one side. My gun's not really set up to do that, I can't see through the scope. But essentially over here, when you get whacked, your shoulder's going to go around, you're going to pivot over here. What's actually going to happen is your shoulder's going to go up and out. And you'll find, just to, just to do that shot, you'll find that your point of aim, your point of impact, will actually change. Um, the big deal is, you adjust your sights for that, you'll hit it. The big deal is consistency, of trying to make that consistent is almost impossible. Anyway, um, I think that's about an idea of the, of, of the, of the position. Um, are things I would go through which I find really important um, and really other things that I find that I is settle into a gun. The, um, as I said, ultimately I'll have my actual shooting position, my hand grip will be almost no tension at all. I'll actually get to the point where my hand is free and only my trigger is touching in some circumstances. Uh, but certainly, and in, in other ones I'll simply rest, rest a little bit of the weight of my hand on the back of the buckstop, or sorry, on the, on the back here behind the action. Um, and what I should say there is that with different rifles, different stocks, I, I find that some of them need different things. You'll find in some, like I said, I'll pull a little bit of pressure back here to actually make it a little more stable. In some, I'll put a little more pressure down onto the bag to try and keep it stable. Um, that's something I don't like when a rifle's set up like that. I'd prefer to change the rifle but it is a way you can make it work. But it is also has to go into your mental notes of this is how this rifle shoots for me. Um, I think that's a, that's a, a bit of an idea. Um, I've no doubt that um, opens up uh, um, um, some questions, but um, that's basically what I find is, um, works very well for me. Like I said, there is a fair bit of how I set up my rifle, but I think some of those things are still relevant for, the, um, for every prone shooter, um, whether it's a completely disregard because they've been taught properly or it makes sense give some help um, give some clues then I'm um, happy to share thanks for watching the video guys I hope you enjoyed uh, down below here we've got a link to our web store where we have some of the specialized long-range shooting products that we actually produce check them out and for those of you who can it'd be great to get some help in our store we have support bits and when you purchase those the money goes direct to our channel and helps us bring these videos to you Thanks, guys. See you next time.